he was a beautiful man and you know I privileged to feel he was my friend. We've lost him. You know, we lost him in 1980. And we don't know what we, what we would have got had he lived, but we know what he gave us when he was alive. You know, the force of John, that's why he's one of the greats, that's how it is. John is so special because he writes right away what he feels. I was raised by my auntie. My father and my mother split when I was about four. He was a merchant seaman, you know, you can imagine, in, and it was 1940s yes. in the war and all that. He, he left and I was brought up by an auntie. And then at, when I was 16, I re-established a relationship with my mother for about four years. She taught me music. She first of all taught me the banjo, and from that I progressed to guitar. She, the first song I learned was Ain't That A Shame, an old rock hit, Fats Domino. And then unfortunately she was uh, run over by an off-duty policeman who was drunk at the time. He had an enormous amount of pain, just enormous. I mean, you know, I've seen an awful lot and I don't think I've ever seen the equal, you know. It was a terrible thing and also a good thing because it just drove him. It's very important to him that he actually does put what he's writing in the song into the way he's singing it. I mean, that's what makes a good singer. If it's Dylan or if it's John or if it's anybody, that's, that's how a good singer has to sing. The simplicity of what? Klaus and I played with him, gave him a great opportunity to actually, for the first time, really use his, his voice how he, and, and his emotion how he could, you know. There was no battle going on. John's voice was everything, you know, and he, he communicates with his voice everything that he wants to communicate. Since, uh... John met Yoko, things were going up for, for John, definitely. He was very lost. I had several experiences with him where he was very down and didn't want to live. You know, he didn't have much joy in life. And uh, he didn't know where he was going, what he was doing. I mean, he was famous and everything, but still that man, what man was very, very unhappy. And Yoko really, was the start for him getting better and better. The Beatles were still active when uh, John decided that the Beatles themselves shouldn't be his sole musical outlet and he needed some other, some other outlet. And he formed the Plastic Ono Band. The dream's over, like, it's over, you know, and we got to, well, I have, anyway, personally, got to get down to so-called reality. He was always brave. Uh, he would put it out there. Um, and the consequences sometimes were, were very harsh, but he would always put it out there. And that's why you could not, not love him. Mm -hmm. 